Welcome back to another episode of Uploaded and Unfiltered, the podcast in which I, your host, Kryptonite, interviews another creator in regards to their journey thus far. Tonight, I have a special guest, and I'm going to read his bio to give you a little backstory on him before we get him on the mic. I, Chris Panda, competitive gamer, content creator, event organizer, amateur journalist, and overall nerd. Jack of all trades from video editing to mastering gameplay, Chris is a bevy of knowledge and passion for several interests. Always willing to learn and adapt, but never accepting the status quo, Panda cars success for his future and those around him or access to Almax Temple. <clears throat> Anime nerd, wrestling fan, and gamer are just taglines for the older than he looks creator. So chill out with the bastard of bamboo, I Chris Panda. Welcome to the podcast, you motherfucker. <laughs> I was wondering, I was like, I wonder if he's gonna understand that I want access to Olmec's temple or if he's gonna actually yes. commit to calling me the bastard of bamboo. Oh, uh, 100%. I legend it in simple. That's like my childhood. God damn it. <laughs> Dude, it's it's one of those things like I, I go back, you know, obviously I got to listen to the homie boss and I'm like, this man, I've known him for so long. Mm -hmm. And if you guys have not listened to previous episodes, do yourself a favor and listen in. It's an honor to be on the show. And it's fantastic because I, I actually love this series. It's fantastic. It's one of the few podcasts I listen to. Damn. Boss is on here. And yeah. we've known Boss for a long time. He's Mr. AKA, tons of names. Exactly. And I'm like, you know, why not start calling myself the Bastard of Bamboo? Because I'm like, it just kind of works. It wor I was like, is this new? It is. It is new. I'm, I'm trying some stuff. I kind of want to like reimagine myself in several different facets in life that, of course, yes. through this episode, maybe a little bit more revealing just because, you know, it, it's it's about time, you know, as, as a content creator, you kind of got to start reforming yourself in the best ways possible. And I feel like, you know, what a better way to do it than one, get on the show, start outlying that and then keep working on it as I move forward. Hell yeah. I, yo, yo, this is about to be a banger. Go ahead and get your iPhones ready. Set them shits to, I don't know, some temperature to keep it cool. Yeah, put a fan on it, you know. Exactly. You know, honestly, I bought a fan from Timu and I got some <laughs> thoughts on it. I'm not even joking. I wish I was. I have problems. <laughs> Chris, let's go ahead and start this podcast off right. Mm -hmm. Let me know and let everyone know listening, what was the origin story of I, Chris Panda as far as your content creation goes? Also, where are you now and where are you headed? So, you know, past, present, future. Sure. Putting you on the spot. Of course. So for those who don't know, I've actually been doing content creation off and on again since probably 2007, 2008. Back when I was in like high school, YouTube was just like a kind of twinkle in the internet's eye where nobody really knew what it was. It was the Wild West and it was just putting up videos. Mm -hmm. I was a huge roller coaster tycoon fan then, still am now. <laughs> I found out you could record footage. So I was making footage chopping it up and here here's how bad it was and i feel like some people don't understand this because computers are so powerful nowadays to just record the footage in the game engine itself on my horrible e-machine i don't even think e-machine exists anymore but i used an e-machine and this is how bad roller coaster tycoon ran on that game trees that were supposed to be three-dimensional were flat and would rotate in a circular motion just to kind of see what it was like oh that's amazing the water was non-existent but whenever you clicked on it a droplet of like nothingness would appear <laughs> <laughs> and i was like i love this game but then in yeah. order to record how long was that video that video that i made was like 15 seconds in length to, re okay. to record the video on that machine took eight hours what i would literally turn on the computer do what i needed to do because i would i would literally save it so they would do that record the ride go to school and then come back and then roughly around the time school is over with maybe like an hour or so after it it'd be done rendering and then i would take that into windows movie maker and just throw some bs music behind it i don't i don't, yeah. I don't what, what what music did i have let the bodies hit the floor by drowning okay yeah that makes sense <laughs> And I would throw it in there and I got it up on YouTube. It was such a crappy video and it was just bad, but it was like the start. It was the start of trying oh, to yeah. figure out what you wanted to do. Then after that, I made like another theme ride and people liked it there. And then there was criticism. And then I started making like compilation videos and those were getting like mm -hmm. thousands of views, like Damn. thousands of views because early YouTube, when nobody's doing anything in that sort of landscape for video game, you were making tons of things happen for you and i don't think people yeah people don't understand that nowadays because everybody can do it so easily 
exactly that back then it was just like oh my god this person is doing this and oh my i was shocked and i was just so happy to do it like and then i took a break <laughs> right i took mm -hmm. a break i didn't my computer was dying because i was like i want to record console stuff and i was like i want to dazzle <laughs> <laughs> this really shows how old i am because i know you know yes what it is. <laughs> dazzle i haven't heard that in a decade easy i wanted to dazzle so bad because everyone's like this is the standard of what you need because you're going to be able to get 480p gameplay right I'm like, <laughs> yeah like, this is going to be amazing now mind you i didn't understand that you still need a computer that could run the software for it because nobody mm -hmm. i was just like i just wanted to right. dazzle never got a dazzle. So I was like, cool, what's the next best thing? And they were like, hop hog, a hop hog that ran component. Yeah. So the green, blue, red, and the yeah, red I had one of those. I remember getting footage for that. And I was like, this is incredible. It didn't look amazing. But like, I was watching fighting game tournaments at the time. And people were like, totally into it. This was like 2010. Okay, 2011. And that's when I started like, getting more into that competitive side. And I was like, Okay, cool. Marvel's out. This is great. And that's when like everything started to like open up and expand for me as a creator. Okay. As more time went on. The early stages, cool. It's it's like a landscape thing where I don't know what. This is where I started to like really get invested. I started to see mm -hmm. myself wanting to make videos and wanting to figure out how to do videos. And back then we were doing podcasts as well. So I've been doing podcasts for a long time, actually. And the worst part is that uh, we didn't understand that we needed to hold on to these things because we had some mm. gold podcasts back in the day with me, uh, with myself and uh, people like Foxy Steve and other people who are part of my group, SFXX Play. And it was just a masterclass of content creation for a long time. And you just, it, it's gone to the wayside by now Damn. to the point where it's like, okay, at least we started something. But like the big journey was like, we were doing it. We started getting content. Steve started getting a computer. Mm -hmm. And then eventually I got a computer. And then everything exploded for us. We started like making more content. We started streaming. We started making connections. We started getting to the point where like our local area were recognizing us. People were like, oh, you're the guys from this channel. We we're like, we are. Damn. Thank you. We were running events. We were holding tournaments and prizes. We, we actually, it's actually something we really love that I, I really want to discuss. Uh, we ran a local event and we ran a tournament once a year called Random Select where there was nothing offline. Oh, damn. A lot of tournaments now are starting to kind of do this. If you go to like, if you look at fighting game tournaments, they really do like these, here's a tournament and it's always going to be these random games uh, and it's a mystery tournament. Right. Our mystery tournament was called Random Select and every round was a different game and there was always different rules and stipulations. That sounds wild. So one round could be like Street Fighter 1, another round could be like Mario Kart, and then another round could be like NFL Blitz, and then another round could be Pac-Man because it was always a different challenge and it wasn't it was like this is open for everybody because now it's not just a fighting game one-on-one -on -one situation but it can determine who right. is the best video game player yeah and people loved it in our area they loved it a lot that sounds amazing it is it's fantastic <laughs> and, and we missed the hell out of it and of course you know pandemic hit and whatnot right true, and, of, true. and of course during all this time we're still streaming pandemic hit we had to take a break and then content creation kind of fell by the wayside and it's a lot of it's been like very introspective to try and figure out who I am as a content creator and then get to this point where it's like we have FNF here, I have myself, I still have SFXX play to the side where Steve and I are trying to rebrand that completely to fit our lifestyle and needs and what we want to do. And it's it's just been a journey this entire time because you go from humble beginnings of like just wanting to figure out what YouTube is, trying to mm -hmm. catch, catch a wave with everybody else to this point where right. everybody can catch it because it's a free, it's literally Moses guided the, he parted the sea of content creation. <laughs> for you. And now everybody is like, I can do it. I can. Do exactly. It. And it's, exactly. It's so easy to just get into content creation at the touch of your fingers that it's kind of amazing to be completely honest. Yeah, no. And like finding your footing, like being in early day of YouTube, I remember, I think my first video was uploaded in 06 as well. Mm. And like, I wasn't thinking longevity. I was just like, I feel like shooting a video. And I just throw that bitch up and it would hit, it would get numbers. And I think those early successes for me is what sparked the idea. It's like, oh, I can actually, I could probably do something with this. Early YouTube was fun, right? <laughs> Let me know if you had this experience, but there was a point in time where there was really no requirements for mm -hmm. monetization. Mm -hmm. And I had that motherfucker and I was making a little bit of change. 
and they threw up the requirements and all that shut down. And I think that took the wind out of my cells a little bit. I was like, oh. Yeah, that was actually something that I didn't mention when I was, uh, when me and Steve and everybody else in my group for SFW Explains, so shout out to uh, Big Mo, Hazmat, uh, Rantron Manlos, uh, Foxy Steve. We were all amp crazy even though he's not like fully in it, but it doesn't matter we were all invested into doing content together in some way shape or form and we were getting numbers and numbers and numbers and numbers and then we did have a threshold at that time yeah but the threshold was so much smaller than it is now that we started getting money off of videos yeah exactly that's when my eyes lit up because i was like right holy crap everything i'm doing is worth it exactly stars aligned and that's how i knew i was like so I can be a content creator and be profitable. Right. It's a good feeling. And then of course they changed it. <laughs> right. And they say, right. get that shit out of your mind. <laughs> what do you think you're doing? It's like, no, 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 no. Please. <laughs> Revenue. Kiss my ass. <laughs> You thought you was getting absent? Right. <laughs> oh my God. It was so bad. Like, I'm happy because now it's like you can make even more money. But God. Mm, yeah. It's like, why take it away from the people who was already making money? You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, they kind of they kind of revamped it a little bit to help. Yeah. But man, again, those early days were mm, they were fantastic. Me too. <laughs> well, you know what? Going from uh, early beginnings into where you are currently, actually, did you speak on what what your current content is? In a way, no. So currently, I've been on a little bit of a hiatus. Mm -hmm. The main thing I've been doing right now is with uh, New Lion, a.k.a. Nami, we've been doing kind of like a podcast sort of thing where I kind of stream a little bit and we kind of just chit chat with viewers. And it's kind of a podcast setting, but it's strictly to Twitch. Gotcha. We may put it out to YouTube, but it's just been it's been nice because it's like we just get to chit chat. It isn't like we're just chatting with everybody there. It's a nice form setting. Right. It's very open for myself personally. Uh, one thing I've been doing is I've been supporting uh, Colbert. If you guys haven't checked out Colbert, another fantastic content creator. For sure. Is Mouth Federation with <laughs> Bossu, of course. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it's really good because creatively, like, I, I'm a huge wrestling fan, gigantic wrestling fan. Been one since 1996 or seven <laughs> and haven't stopped. And right now, it's really creative for a lot of us because there's so many moving parts and moving pieces and everybody wants to help create a good show that's interesting so that when they get to watch just the CPU versus CPU battle, it feels like you're watching a different wrestling show. Right. And I find that interesting because me and boss are in a faction and right now we're down, on, we're down on our luck. Things have not been going our way. Boss stole a title, didn't win because the game screwed him. I had a title. I was showboating and chauvinistic, lost the title. <laughs> It's fine though. I mean, he. I'm a. I'm a bad guy. I gotta be yeah. that way. I yeah. want to be this way. And for those listening, don't forget this is a wrestling league that is in WWE 2K23. Yeah, a video game that is ran solely by the users, and it's amazing. Like, I can't. It still blows my mind. Uh, the thing I think we that hasn't been said about this whole like project, it is very collaborative. There's what, how many of y'all working on this together? Like, granted, you'll be working on your piece and you might collab with Boss, but all of it comes together to make the project. And it's been it's it's insane how well tuned that that machine is. Yeah, I think the active roster and this is mind you, this isn't like every person is an individual entity. Some people have multiple characters. Mm -hmm. But I know the active roster is somewhere at least over 60 people. Good God. So probably active that's helping, contributing at least 40 to 50. That's wild. There's either you've made a wrestler and you let him rock. You made, you're helping out on commentary. You're making like, like Schwam is doing like arenas, belts, and all these other things. And there's so many moving mm -hmm. pieces behind the scenes. And it's fantastic. And I'm just happy to be doing my little like weird slice of like, awkwardness boss has his very angry stuff and i'm trying to get into this like weird kind of like creepy like hey this is very one way but it's going to twist you and turn you a little bit because i feel like i want to make it so that it's like you're watching the show and it's not just here's this guy versus this guy oh that's what happened and that's the end of it mm -hmm. i want it i want it to be an experience so that when people come to colbert's channel they get enticed by not only the stuff that i produce but his reactions and genuine like make makeshift attitude on the fly for how it works and it's been fantastic that's gonna be dope i love this and um yeah it's it's been so good and that's just one that's just another piece of the puzzle that's been going on for for me creatively 
because like I've like I've said a second second ago, there was the uh, off chance streams that I've been doing. There's that, mm-hmm. and I've been restructuring my personal content for not only F and F but myself. Right. It's been a lot of like trying to digest what I want, where I want, and how I want to present every bit of content that I come out with. Mm-hmm. Especially because I I can I can manage making content that's good enough to go with several brands. I've streamed on TikTok to hundreds of thousands of people. Mm-hmm. It's been fantastic. Right. And the numbers represent themselves very well. However, I just haven't felt the need or not the need, but the show of everything kind of like coming back to me. And it's kind of hindering my like motivation. Gotcha. Okay. So recently I've been like, I want to start making content that I find interesting. So I have actually been writing down ideas for FNF. Okay. And I actually have them right here. And for your podcast, I am actually going to tell you two of what they are. (laughs) Yes. Give it. Ooh. So, So, you know what? We're going to, I'm going to go ahead and segue into current mindset Mm -hmm. since I feel like that's where we're going. And I'm excited to hear this because this is exclusive for me. Uh, Fuck everybody else who's listening. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, you're not wrong. I have not told you this. I haven't told you this off, offline, off microphone, off camera, whatever you want to call this. I haven't told boss this. And obviously, I'll probably parlay into telling this at some point, but that's not the point. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right. Lay it on me. What is it? So I have two general ideas for FNF right now for videos that I plan on doing. One of them is basically fighting game character history. I'm going to be taking a character and I'm going to do in-depth analysis on where they come from, their actual history origin, and a little bit more about their like game history as well. Okay. So like hypothetical would be like, I'm going to look at Liu Kang from Mortal Kombat. I'm going to go and give an in-depth story about who is Liu Kang, what is Liu Kang from MK1 to now. Damn. And his character evolution in terms of not only his moveset, but how he has evolved visually and story-wise as a character. Man, so it's I, be, I love it. It's going to be very interesting. It's going to take a little bit of time, but this is exactly what I want. Exactly, because now I get to work harder on a piece that's going to be more interesting instead of something I can crank out immediately. Right. And another one is the same sort of concept, but it's for fighting game stages. Okay. And that's going to go across several different genres. There are a lot of fighting game stages that have a lot of like actual lore behind them, and one of them perchance is going to be one of my favorites to talk about it's called moonlit wilderness okay it is from tekken 5 it is a stage that has appeared i think in tekken 5 and in tekken tag 2 okay it is the if you if you, any of you play tekken 5 it is the stage where it's a moon and you're in a field of grass and it's kind of swaying back and forth and oh yeah the song is badass everybody knows it. it's really sick <laughs> I love that stage, and I feel like it's just symbolic to just talk about it and how much people love it and just kind of go over the type of stage it is, the origin of like some of these stages, and say why it's significant. And I feel like it's good because there isn't too many people that are doing things like this. Right. That sounds... I like this idea because I, while I love fighting games, learning the backstory about some of these characters just through chat has been amazing. I've had thoughts like this in my head for a while now, but I feel like now is like the perfect time to start doing it because you, when you sit there and you ponder about like, there's so many people who are like, I want to be the next big streamer and I want to be the next big content creator. The thing is when you look at like Twitch as a platform or you look at kick or you look at Trovo or you look at TikTok or you look at YouTube streaming is great, but there is no full end game for anybody that says they're going to be a streamer. Mm -hmm. They gradually kind of like get to an end game as they stream. There's very few people who come into streaming and are like, I already know what I want to be by the time I do this. I've mentioned in certain places that for me, streaming is more or less just an enjoyable means. Whereas like content creation, I want it to parlay into a full career. And whether that's by myself doing my own thing, or if it's like, tied to a company, Mm -hmm. I want to use my content creation to better myself in the long run. Because at the end of the day, nobody should just go and turn on a camera and be like, I just do this for fun. Mm-hmm. have have some goals in mind you know it's, it's it, it is fun you should always have fun when you're doing something that you enjoy but for me personally like i said i'm this content that i'm making moving forward is like it's fun for me but i have so many big goals ahead hell yeah yeah and while it's fun it's going to be enjoyable and while it's enjoyable you're going to continue to want to do it which is what we need <laughs> you need to keep pushing forward of course That's awesome of course god damn well chris we're going to uh, slide from what you're doing now, what your future is going to look like and kind of jump into the past. Are there any moments during your content creation career 
that stand out either exciting or something that brought up some life lessons that you learned any moments like that can you think of any does any come to mind for you <laughs> plenty <laughs> I, know I, I know i just i just do a fucking grenade out there but um, and you know what i i, I have i have plenty and good and bad <laughs> <laughs> let's do this let's go good this episode because uh i have plenty i'm pretty sure bad is not something that we should yeah. like target right immediately because i feel like people be like yeah. i want i want to hear that no nah, man let's yeah yeah then we'll say that for like episode 50 or some shit so i'm gonna do I'm, I'm gonna give you i'm gonna give a couple good examples so i mentioned earlier i have been noticed from like the content creation stuff that steve and i have done right it also has come from me like competing as well i have been competitive like fighting game player since relatively like 2010 2011 something like that mm -hmm. Shout out to, he doesn't go by uh, Black Tastic. He goes by Bobby because that's just his name, but he like spells it differently. Gotcha. I, I'll never forget. I think I was like playing in like local little video game tourneys here and stuff at like anime conventions. I did one for Street Fighter Cross Tekken at a GameStop. Midnight for me, Street Fighter Cross Tekken bodied it. First place. Wow. Cannon King. My team was on fire. I was doing well. Never played the game. People thought I had the game already. I was like, nope. That's wild. You know what? I am not surprised. I played with you. You, you know how I trained for that tournament? I watched videos and just kind of put that the pieces awesome. to the puzzle together. That's crazy. And I was like, look, man, all I got to do is give me give me five minutes to learn a couple moves and I'm going to figure it out. Basically. And, and I was like, okay, I won that tournament. There was another one that was happening a few cities away from me, like 15, 20 mm. minutes away from my house. I came in second that day. Uh, my buddy came in third and the guy I mentioned before, Blacktastic, aka Bobby, came in first and he was like, yo, you're really good at fighting games. Have you heard about console combat, which at the time was our like local fighting game scene? Okay. I went out and I started meeting a lot of people who are like really cool friends of mine now. I was getting bodied by them though. They were fantastic players. <laughs> <laughs> but it was but it was eye opening, man, because it was like, yo, I can yeah. I can play fighting games and make content. Yeah. And to parlay that kind of commentary into what I was gonna mention, as Steve and I were starting to make more content together, one of the biggest things that hit for us, we made a top 10 worst fighting game video on YouTube. That video hit mm -hmm. for us so well that it basically like ignited our channel. That's awesome. It was so big that you don't think about how good it is until it happens to you. Mm -hmm. We were we were sitting there, we were just like, we didn't think it was that good when we made it, <laughs> but we wanted <laughs> But I know that sounds really pessimistic. We didn't think. No, that sounds like reality. <laughs> we didn't think it was good. Yeah. But we wanted to try to see where we could land with it. Okay. This video has uh, 384,000 views. Good Lord. For the long. Oh, wow. <laughs> for the longest amount of time for a top 10 uh, worst fighting game video, it was like number two on every search history that you'd pull up. What? It was it was like Maximilian and then that. It was like that's amazing. It was fantastic. And we were just like, we did something right. <laughs> and so like you've had that experience of that one video just popping off. Um so <laughs> Okay, okay. So same channel before that. Yeah. The third video we ever did it actually was so minimal in terms of like how content was made. Mind you, I've worked at GameStop for so many years. Mm. Steve worked at GameStop with our funny good buddy Bird God. And they set up the Wii U and they actually gave a hands on demo before anybody got a chance to play it. That video got almost 10,000 views. And that was the third video on our channel. <laughs> That's crazy. It was like, that, okay, so you get that hit early. Our channel was lucrative and we were making money. So we were just like, wow, this is incredible. But then there, then, you know, life hits right? and the drop off started to happen. So we couldn't produce as well as we wanted to. And that kind of was like the downfall of that. But it was like mm -hmm. all of that parlayed into like our natural success in this like universe of how to make content creation. We were able to get in the touch with like uh, developers, like any developers and other developers to see if we could get codes and things okay. like that. Right. It parlayed into us being able to run events because people recognized us and wanted our support because we were intelligible about how to get to this like level of success. Right. 
And we weren't perfect at it. And to be completely honest, looking at some of this stuff, thumbnails could be better. You know, titles could be mm -hmm. better. You grow, right. you grow more as a content creator. And it's just like, you want to do better and better. Even the video editing was like kind of crap then. Mm -hmm. And I feel like one of the high points after that for me was we did a video that we were just making for an event six years after like that first big video mm -hmm. for uh, the worst fighting games called Forgotten Superhero Games. The thumbnail, pretty crap. Not gonna lie. I look at it right now. <laughs> I'm like, I can't read anything it says. But damn, the only thing that mattered most to us is we did have something special in it where we remade all Spider-Man one under 40 bucks. Oh, yeah, I remember this. So many, I, I'm, I'm happy you do because mm -hmm. so many people remember it. And they're like, you guys should do more of that. I was at my nine to five and I was talking to this customer and I'm just like, yeah, she was like, why do you do multiple cameras on an iPhone? I don't really understand. I'm like, well, I need it because I make videos and stuff. She's like, oh, really? What do you do? And I was like, well, so I had to go and show her that. <laughs> and I showed her like a clip or two of it. And she was just like, right. oh, this is hilarious. I'm going to go get high at, at home and watch this. <laughs> she was so invested. And I'm just like, yeah, yes, cool. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. See, hearing shit like that, like, I know comments are there, mm -hmm. but it's different when somebody says some shit in real life. You're like, oh, damn. All right. Cool. <laughs> you enjoy my shit? It really is. It, it really hits different because then it's like, mm -hmm. this is just a random person. This is a random person. Right. I've never interacted with them before that day. And they're like, oh, you're really successful. You're really successful. And I really like the stuff you're doing. It's really funny. And you get really thrilled to be into a point where your stuff is really translating to success and it doesn't have to mean exactly money but it can just mean that you've entertained somebody right and that's something i learned from streaming from content creation in general just to be like you know these people watch my stuff and it makes them happy and it'll, it'll it can turn somebody's bad day into a good day and be like you know what i'm happy that you did this because it entertained me and it made me forget something i was doing and i'm like that's some of the best stuff in the world. Obviously, money's great, but that's like much better than anything else. I feel you, yeah, and I agree, man. Because that's and you can tell when it's genuine. Like it's it's hard to come across that feeling out of someone else in in this day and age. So to hear it and feel that heartfelt like thank you, it's like all right, dope. I'm doing some good in the world. Exactly. That is dope. Well, well, you, you mentioned it a, a number of times you have a lot of experience and you have more experience. Like we've known each other for a long time. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize the YouTube channel was popping like that. Yeah. And so I'm gonna go ahead and lead into this next section. What would be some words of advice that you would provide to somebody who, who is, they just started, not even started. They're thinking about doing content creation. They know they want to, they just don't know where to start. Like what, what advice would you give them? Oh, as a person who's been listening to your show, <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I knew this was going to come up and I was like, I should be the asshole villain and be like, if someone tells you that you shouldn't do it, that's right. Listen and just don't do it. <laughs> just, just, just give up right now. <laughs> just stop it. <laughs> just go home and be a family man. <laughs> no, <laughs> honestly, God damn it. <laughs> honestly, the fucked up thing is I, I, my, my words for anybody is so difficult because I could go on for days. I have, I've, I've had the ups and the downs so frequently. I could tell you it's like yeah. giving trust to people, but make, make sure you have your own plan. Don't give it all to somebody. Do what you want to, but be forthright about it. You know, don't settle for anything less but success. So if somebody tells you they can't, that you shouldn't do it or you can't do it, that doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. That just means that you should be cautious and strong-willed about it. Like, mm -hmm. to be completely honest, for those who, who have watched the show, I, I think I've talked to Crip about this several times because it wasn't just him who wanted to do a podcast, but it was a couple of our other friends. Mm -hmm. And I've had so many negative ideas about podcasts lately that I'm like, don't really do it because it is, it's, it's an uphill battle. There's so many podcasts out and anybody can do it that it's really hard to like formulate your own plan. Mm -hmm. Thank God you did do this podcast because <laughs> this is a good format. Uh -huh. And this is, this is first off, I, I haven't had a chance to tell you the podcast link digestible the content appreciated yeah. and it's unique there isn't there aren't many shows on at least in the podcast world that i've heard that sound this good seem this good and provide as much information from so many different perspectives god damn um, yo i appreciate that man dude I, I i really think you have something like solid on your hands because 
I come from a place where I had a podcast where we were just bullshitting. <laughs> it was right. We would literally be like, what do we feel like talking about? And it was fun, yeah. but it would be like over an hour in length. And it mm-hmm. was great. And it's a funny listen, but the audio complete dog water. It's horrible. It's not, gotcha. it, yeah. there was always something wrong with it. Right. We had another one where we were just recording on iPhones and we were doing like video game news, but it always peered off the rail. Mm-hmm. And then Steve and I started doing an Xbox podcast and arguably that Xbox it podcast. Was good. It was I remember good. that one. It was pretty good. Yeah. But we got depressed. <laughs> ah, that, yeah. We got to do it. We got depressed <laughs> because the show, the show revolved around Xbox. <laughs> yeah. And the news for Xbox was never happening. Exactly. <laughs> there was never it was any never news. good. It was like, oh. it was like, well, uh, they bought somebody, I think. I don't know. Right. It was like when we were like, there's rumors that they're buying this. Halo's doing bad. And then a week later, yep. hey man, Halo's still doing bad. And it's like, I think one <laughs> I think in one month we reported about how bad the subject matter for Halo was for Halo Infinite, like three out of the four weeks of the show. We were like, oh my God, I'm so sick of talking about Halo. Mm-hmm. It was so sad. And we were trying to figure out ways to change it up and switch it up. And we did, but that's the that's the beauty of a podcast and i think this one's going places that some people don't i appreciate that man of course but my best news for my best advice is all those things i just mentioned and don't be afraid to take chances true there's so many instances where people are like i want to be this sort of content creator where i want to focus on this and do that because it's going to guide me down the right path which is true sometimes people say there's always so many things you can do to get down the right path if you're a streamer you should mm-hmm. do only this because this way you're going to generate that path but once you pivot once you pivot off it's going to be harder for you to regain footing again right don't be afraid to be yourself don't be afraid to take a chance like i already know how solid and normal that i can sound and the very chill person that i am Mm -hmm. but i know how stupid i am as well (laughs) i i can't stress this enough that i'm like people who talk to me they're like oh he's a really chill guy but then like you meet me in person and I'm really chill and I'm really nice. And then the next minute I just start singing and dancing. I was at work and I'm dealing with customers. People go away. And next thing you know, you hear me, I'm gonna have to pull my mic away for a minute. You hear me yeah. in the other side of the store. And I'm just like, I don't know why I'm saying it. <laughs> I don't know why I'm saying it, but I'm what the doing fuck? it. Yeah. And I just started like looking at my coworker and I'm like, ski. And <laughs> if we just, damn, it's just the type of mindset of a person I am. And I translate that to my content because I want people, I want people to be like, oh, you can be very normal and real with them. Like that's why the stuff that I'm making is going to be very informational. But w- whenever you catch me on a stream, you can talk to me and chill. And then you'll hear me just say really outlandish shit because that's the type of person I am. 100%. And I think <laughs> like not to like put the spotlight on us, but I think that's why FNF works uh-huh. because at some point we all get into that stage and just magic happens. And it's hilarious. It's the best. It is the best. I love it. So yeah, be yourself, guys. Be yourself. Truer words have not been spoken. That's a dumb saying. I don't like it. But uh <laughs> <laughs> Chris, like everything you said, I knew I luckily I have good intuition because everybody who I've had on the show has had some dope ass words of advice. Mm-hmm. Like you said, have different perspectives. And that's what I really want to get out is these conversations that we have like me you boss we talk about everything yeah. like our lives about content mm-hmm. personal lives and not that i want to get personal on this podcast but i definitely think the content stories are always good to hear like i'm hearing stuff about you that i didn't even know and i'm like what the fuck? yeah man let me go check out this youtube dude we did food reviews mm-hmm. at one point we were doing what oh yeah i don't even know if you remember this mcdonald's sold like mozzarella sticks at one point I did not know that. What the fuck? Oh, they were disgusting. <laughs> they were not good. <laughs> Hollowed out with cheese stuck to them. It's like, ugh. Uh, I'm a, wait, so you're saying there's a video of this? Yes, on there, the channel? yes, we got a few food review videos. I think like some, like a couple beers. I think the mozzarella sticks from McDonald's. And I think I did like cinnamon flavored Oreos. Yeah. Okay. I have a homework assignment for everybody listening because i just like as he was talking i was like i'm about to go do this so if you have a favorite content creator maybe they have a youtube channel or you yourself you're a content creator go look at your old videos Mm -hmm. just go do it i know it's gonna be painful because i watched one where i was like 
I think I was like a senior in college and I'm like, God damn, I had hair. <laughs> wow. Look at me. And I was skinny. Oh, no, it's, it's crazy. But I, I do it personally because it is a nice like reflection of like, oh, look where I came from. Like mm -hmm. my content's better. I sound better. Everything looks better. I already know what I would change about this video. I would do this and this just to show yourself some growth, but also seeing some of your favorite content creators, old stuff gives you appreciation for where they came from and where they are now. It's really one of those things that gives you a really good sense of perspective mm -hmm. because it, oftentimes when you make so much content and I don't know how many videos I made for SF double X play mm -hmm. and myself and like other people and like FNF included, I've made well over 500 plus videos maybe close to a thousand i don't know easy and then the streams and then just you know time slips away from you so much that as a content creator you kind of forget where you come from and how to like progress going forward because all you do is look at go 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 right that if you don't look back at the past you know you never know how to actually profit from the future and it's it's a good idea to know where you've been to get to where you're going true i like that say that saying i like the other one don't listen to that. I'm actually going to cut that one. You probably didn't even hear it because I cut that shit. <laughs> Chris, thank you again for doing this with me. I appreciate it. I'm not that I, I knew you were going to do it because we're homies mm -hmm. and that's what we do for each other. For sure. But where can the people find you? Where is your content living nowadays? Sure. Essentially, if you have a social media thing or some sort of entertainment device and search I, Chris Panda, you're going to find me. That's going to be TikTok, Twitter slash X or whatever you want to call it. Uh, Instagram, <laughs> YouTube, Twitch. I'm on all these platforms. Uh, if you want even further content from back in the day to potentially coming soon, SFXX play. I won't say double X, guess how we pronounce it. We're going through a name change, so don't worry about that. And of course, <laughs> Fight Night FGC with, of course, Kryptonite and, and Final Boss, aka Boss Who Versus. These are the homies, and we make a lot of content together, and it's it comes out pretty well. Yes, sir. Uh, again, go follow him if you haven't already. Very entertaining. I only rock with people that I think are entertaining. So if you like what I do and you trust my judgment, Chris is right up there with you. If you know anyone out there who could benefit from conversations like these and more, share this podcast with that person. Let them know that this exists. We are creators talking to other creators about creative shit. And uh, it's been pretty dope so far. I think the more conversations we have like this, the more people will get comfortable and knowing they're not the only one feeling like, oh my God, people are going to judge me. They're not. Just stop thinking that shit. They're not. And even if they are, fuck them. Make your content, put it out there. Let people see what you got. As simple as that. Other than that, again, Chris, thank you for doing the podcast. Appreciate you. Of course. I appreciate everybody who's listening. Uh, thank you again. Uh, as always, protect your mental, keep creating content, and I will see y'all in the next one. Peace.